Hey you guys, welcome back to my Flickers of Fear show and this is the last installment of Giallo July. But don't be upset if you really like these Giallo movie reviews, then, you know, I'm gonna always be doing Giallo movie reviews because I really like them. You know, I might do another month where it's nothing but Giallo movies, but there will still be Giallo movie reviews sprinkled throughout the other ones uh, in the other months as well. So don't worry, uh, they're not going away. So the one I'm talking about today, this one's a little bit of an odd one. Now, uh, we've talked about Sergio Martino before, probably one of the best regarded uh, directors of Giallo movies. He did other ones as well, like a lot of Italian uh, directors as well. They worked in other genres, but he's probably best known, uh, you know, easily best known in the U.S. for all of his uh, Giallo films, the ones that he did in the 1970s. I think he did some in the 1980s too, but they aren't as well regarded. Uh, most of the ones that he did in the 1970s, I've already talked about, like in one format or another, like video, or I wrote about them or something like that. He did um, Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, The Case of the Scorpion's Tail, uh, Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, All the Colors of the Dark, with it, which I think I just talked about a couple weeks ago, and Torso, which I think I also reviewed a little while back. So like I said, I've either written reviews or done video reviews of pretty much all of those, maybe, actually maybe all of those, now that I'm thinking about it. However, I will say that the one in his 70s cycle that I never seen and never got around to was his 1975 film, The Suspicious Death of a Minor. And this was the last Giallo he did, like I said, during his 70s cycle. You know, he did do some in the 80s, but they weren't as well received. Uh, this one doesn't get brought up all that much when discussing his work, uh, probably because it's a little bit unconventional for the giallo genre, I feel like. It is considered a giallo, and it does actually have a lot of the tropes of giallo movies, but it's also crossbred with another uh, Italian crime genre, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing this wrong, but it's probably, it's called uh, Polizio Teschi or Teschi. I'm not really Teschi. I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. But uh, basically that is kind of like a Giallo movie, but it focuses more on the police procedural aspect. And there's usually an aspect too of, you know, the kind of rogue cop, the cop that doesn't play by the rules, your dirty, hairy kind of Beverly Hills cop, <laughs> lethal weapon type of thing. Uh, it usually has a character like that, like one cop who doesn't play by by the rules. So this one is kind of like more focused on that than on maybe some more giallo stuff like, you know, kind of ultra violent fetishized murders of women by like a masked and gloved killer. Now, Suspicious Death, which I think was also released in some territories under the name uh, Too Young to Die, also has, and I thought this was very, very weird, but it also has like some lighthearted comedy bits, which uh, some of it's kind of shading over into slapstick, at least in the first half of the movie. Uh, tonally, this is a bit strange, considering that the bulk of the plot centers around an underage human trafficking ring, but you know, okay, <laughs> that's what you want to do. So our main protagonist uh, is an undercover detective named Paolo Jeremy. Now, he's actually played by Claudio Casanelli, who sadly died in 1985, like he was only 46 years old, in a helicopter crash on the set of another Sergio Martino movie, which was actually a, like a science fiction film, which was called uh, Vendetta del Futuro or Hands of Steel, I think that's what it was called in the US. I've actually never seen that, but he uh, died on the set of that, unfortunately. Like I said, he was actually quite young and he had a uh, family as well. So yeah, very sad, but he is in this movie too. So at the beginning of the movie, Jeremy, who we don't actually find out is a cop until later on. It's like, I feel like that's not a spoiler because I think it says in the synopsis of the movie that it's like an undercover cop, but they actually don't tell you that he's an undercover cop until like later on in the movie. Now, so at the very beginning, he's kind of hitting on this young woman who has kind of like little orphan Annie hair. She's sitting alone at this outdoor cafe, garden party. I'm not really sure what the situation is. It's broad daylight, it's not nighttime or anything, but there's like tables and people are sitting around drinking cappuccinos or whatever, but then there's like a whole bunch of people dancing. It almost looked like a wedding. I thought it was like a wedding, like at the beginning of The Godfather, but I guess it's not. So, uh, and the music too is kind of like also reminded me of like The Godfather because it's like super, super Italian, which I thought was like, <laughs> you know, when you stereotypically like think of like old Italian music, that's what you think of. So that's what they're dancing to. Now, the woman uh, that he's hitting on, the orphan Annie woman, she kind of seems initially like she's pretty immune to uh, Jeremy's sort of slick come ons, you know, coming up being like, hey, you're alone, I'm alone, you know, there's that whole thing. So, uh, yeah. But it does appear that she's in some kind of danger as the 
like, there's like a couple of these sinister looking dudes like in really dark sunglasses creeping around kind of like the periphery of the crowd and they're clearly looking for her and she's just kind of like oh shit they found me you know what I mean so she basically like takes advantage of Jeremy being there she's like okay yeah come dance with me and like she kind of like pushes herself up and like brings him in for a kiss like trying to hide her face and shit like that uh but it doesn't really work for all that long the goons actually end up spotting her and she takes off she basically like, bye and then like she takes off running and then this ends up like breaking the lens on Jeremy's glasses which is gonna be like a repeating gag like the rest of, throughout the rest of the movie like he's always getting involved in these scrapes and like one lens on his glasses will break and he'll be like shit and then like he has to go get another pair and like yeah it's like like i said it's a running gag so this young woman who we later find out is named marissa is actually able to evade her pursuers at first but then she ends up going to this room in a boarding house where i presume that she's been staying and she's looking for this guy like she goes up to the apartment she's like hey whatever the hell i can't remember what his name was but she's looking for him uh and while she's in there she gets jumped by one of the sinister dudes from the from before and actually has her throat slashed and what's probably the movie's most violent scene and you get to see like the aftermath too like when the cops come so when jeremy finds out about the murder he kind of becomes intrigued in this i don't think i mean the movie doesn't make this entirely clear unless i wasn't really paying attention but i didn't think that he had any relationship with this woman prior like i don't think he was like watching her or like he knew who she was or that she was in danger i think he just happened to be at this place and started hitting on her and then it just turned out that she was involved in this i don't know though because he was an undercover detective so it could be that he was like watching her or something like that i'm not really clear on that but you know if you know tell me because i don't know um so yeah so he becomes intrigued after he finds out that oh this girl he was hitting on like got murdered now it's suspected at first that marissa was probably a prostitute like a sex worker but there are some kind of rumblings rumors and stuff like that that there's maybe a bigger crime syndicate behind her death one that maybe allegedly uh pimps out underage girls like to the highest bidder also might be engaging in some straight up kidnapping now to this end there's actually kind of like a minor subplot about the young son of a prominent businessman in milan who gets abducted for ransom and jeremy suspects that this case and mur and the murder of marissa might be like connected to the same like big crime syndicate now as i first mentioned the viewer isn't actually informed that jeremy is a cop I kind of suspected that he might be like watching his shenanigans like at the first in the first part of the movie but because his methods were so unorthodox I thought it was also just possible that he could be like from a rival crime syndicate and was like trying to figure out like what the other dudes were up to I wasn't really sure on that I suspected he might be a cop because like I said I didn't read the synopsis beforehand I read it after and that's why I'm not like worried about spoiling it because like I said I'm pretty sure the synopsis says that he's a cop before you know he's a cop he actually ends up joining forces with this young very young like almost teenage or 20s like petty thief a guy he just goes around on a scooter and like snatches people's purses and shit and breaks into people's cars and takes their stuff uh his name's johnny and the pair of them do things like hey let's get let's both get on your scooter and then we'll ride down the street where all the hookers are hanging out and then we'll snatch all their purses and at first i was just kind of like why are you assholes doing that that seems like really dickish um like taking all their money but it turns out that uh jeremy is actually looking for information about this human trafficking ring and is hoping that maybe one of these uh one of the sex workers like have some information in their purse like a phone number or something like that that he can follow up on so that's why he's doing that he also ends up going to this uh it's a, it ends up being like a front company uh, it's supposed to be like a place where you go to like hire out domestic help like I need a housekeeper or something like that and it's supposed to be like a clearinghouse for that but Jeremy suspects this might be maybe where the human trafficking ring is run from so he goes in there and tries to use like all this coded language and stuff yeah I need a babysitter wink wink you know what I mean it's that kind of stuff Jeremy even ends up engaging the services of a prostitute I think her name is Carmela in order to kind of get some scuttlebutt about this whole thing that he suspects is going Going on and then figures well since I already paid for her time might as well use her for her intended purpose which I was kind of like okay <laughs> I guess that's how they the cops do it in Italy I don't know uh Carmela actually ends up getting murdered uh further down the line so you know uh he actually does a similar thing 
with a supposedly underage girl. I think she's supposed to be underage. He asks her how old she is, but she won't say. She says old enough. So, but I'm assuming that she's supposed to be a minor, even though she doesn't really look like one, thankfully, because that would be super creepy. Uh, her name is Floriana. Now, she's actually played by um, Barbara Man Manolfi, Manolfi uh, who was in Suspiria, among other things. Uh, you probably recognize her from that. That's where I recognize her. So he kind of like, he sets up an appointment with her, like, oh, I have this client that's this really rich oil baron that likes some young, if you know what I mean and he sets up this appointment with her but like the guy doesn't exist he just like wants to figure out like what she's what her deal is and then like after she comes and he pays her like he doesn't have sex with her but um he pays her and then he has Gianni like follow her to like see where she's going because he hopes that that will lead back to like maybe the heart of the operation uh he also gets Floriana killed too so there's that um you know not 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 a good padding average uh, for the guy. So uh, so after watching Jeremy's antics, like for the first half of the film, it's finally revealed that Jeremy is indeed a detective, but he's been working undercover in an unofficial, like an official slash unofficial capacity, like on behalf of his superiors. I guess the thing about it is that, well, we've been working on these kidnapping cases, but we can't officially come out and say that we're working on it because then, you know, we'll get in trouble because like the kidnappers are usually for ransom and they're just kind of like hey no cops so it's like so we want to get involved but we don't want anyone to know we're involved because we might get people killed so we have this guy going around like doing some shit so jeremy is apparently able to use whatever means he deems necessary in order to get to the bottom of all of these recent kidnappings and then all the subsequent murders that might be related but when he ends up discovering that this trafficking ring might actually go much higher up than anyone thought, he ends up running into conflict with the police department that he's working for, who either don't really want to believe that some of the city's, city's like wealthiest and most respected men uh, might be involved, <laughs> imagine that, um, or are just afraid that if they look too hard into the case, they're kind of going to be putting targets on their own backs. So he gets, it's, it's very much, like I said, like a rogue cop, uh, you know, playing by his own rules kind of thing where he's always getting yelled at like by his superiors. It's like, why'd you do this? You got this person killed and you messed this up and blah, blah, blah. So he's always getting shouted at and like afraid of like he's going to get fired and shit. So all in all, um, this was a pretty decent watch, but I... I will say that I can see why it isn't as maybe beloved as some of Sergio Martino's other Giallo movies. I did like the mystery aspect of this and the character of Jeremy, even though he's very, very smug and he's kind of like an arrogant douchebag. <laughs> he's still like weirdly endearing which i guess is kind of like a testament to that actor that he's just going around like well actually everybody but like you still don't want to punch him so you know so props there uh the score was actually like kind of fun very funky very very reminiscent of uh goblin's work on dario argento's deep red uh for a second i was like this has got to be claudio simonetti doing this music but it's not uh but obviously you can tell that whoever did do the music they were just kind of like I'm gonna like rip off Claudia Simonetti, you know what I mean? So, but it's fun. Uh, the dialogue is also pretty witty uh, and actually like made me laugh out loud a few times. Although I will say that I could have done without all the slapstick humor because like I said, there's a few things in there, like there's car chases and stuff like that, which is fine, you know, action sequences. But some of the car chases like had this goofy like slapstick humor. Like the one of the, another one of the running gags other than the broken lens on the glasses is that Jeremy has this like really, really shitty car. Like the door keeps falling off and all this other kind of shit. So during this one car chase, like the cops are chasing them and he has all this money from like a ransom it's like a whole thing and him and Johnny are in the car and they're trying to like get this car off their tail so he's pulling the doors off and like throwing the doors like throwing the doors at like the car behind them and then there's another thing too where they hit this guy uh, and you can tell that this was this guy's like main talent and so they made him do it a couple times in the movie but like he gets hit by the car and like he spins and then like falls and then like he spins like up on his head like almost like a break dancer except he's like an older dude so I was like well that's impressive and all but so, so they did it a couple times so like I said it's very very slapsticky and uh, I thought that was kind of strange because I mean for a film whose main plot line involves tra human trafficking and essentially like pedophilia you know <laughs> traffic of teenage girls uh the decision to add kind of like slapsticky gags was very peculiar you know what i mean so totally it's a little bit odd uh the movie i will admit though does go a little bit darker and more in like i said more like a dirty hairy kind of direction in the second half although there is still humor in it like like i said there's a lot of running gags too like there's another one about one of the police superiors like betting on 
soccer games and like he's always trying to get like he doesn't really give a shit about like solving murders he's just all that's all he talks about is like trying to get other people to like set up like betting pools with them like soccer games so that's like another running gag too it's i don't know it's very weird and i will say too that despite the very sleazy subject matter uh of this movie uh, it's not really the movie doesn't come across as very sleazy at all. There is some nudity um, But it's pretty minimal like toward the beginning and the violence is I mean barely registers uh, There is a fairly high body count. I think like maybe 11 people if you go to like there's a great website called I think it's called the giallo files and he has like a um like a checklist of like all this stuff and he'll like put the body count. But I think he said 11 people died in this. But to be honest, only a couple of them get knifed. Like I said, the first woman, like the little orphan Annie woman, Marissa, like she gets the most gruesome death where she actually gets her throat slashed and her face kind of like cut up. But other than that, like most of the deaths are like thugs, like goons, like, and it's gunfights and stuff. So it's not really like that Giallo-esque. But a few people, like one, the big fat lady that uh, is runs the boarding house that Marissa like she gets killed later and that's like pretty gruesome but other than that it's mostly just like gunfights and like cop kind of stuff so not real super violent even though a lot of people do die so this movie a uh, bit of an odd duck uh, that's for sure I would recommend it to if you've seen all of Sergio Martino's other 70s stuff just you know if you're a completist about that because like I said all of his other Giallo movies other than this one are kind of like a lot better regarded or like talked about more this one doesn't get talked about that much I hadn't seen this one but I noticed I think Arrow just put out uh, like a nice restored version of it not too long ago and Shudder just added it like a week or two ago so I said oh okay well I'll watch that one because I haven't seen it and I think that was one of the very few 70s Sergio Martino movies that I hadn't seen uh, but it is a little bit different than like some of the other ones. Like I said, it's much more of a police procedural and like rogue cop type of thing, rebel cop type movie. So if you like that kind of stuff, then you'll probably get it. It's like, don't expect it to be creepy or gruesome or all that horror. You know, it's not really all that violent. But if you're in the right mood for it and you don't mind like a couple of silly comedic touches in your human trafficking storyline. <laughs> then, uh, you know, give it a spin. Uh, and if you've seen it, like I said, because Shudder just added it not too long ago. They added like a handful of uh, more Giallo movies not too long ago. So if you've watched it, let me know what you thought about it. What'd you think of the comedy? Did you like that? Like I said, it was almost, it's not as funny as something like Lethal Weapon or Beverly Hills Cop, but I feel like maybe, even though this was before that, obviously, it feels like that's kind of what they were going for. Um, that kind of vibe, but I'm not sure it entirely works. It was a little bit uneven. Um, especially considering the seriousness of the subject matter. But, you know, your mileage may vary. So let me know what you think about it in the comments. And that will do it for this Flickers of Fear, the last installment of Giallo July. So I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.